If you want to understand where Radical Heights has popped up from, you first need to trace back the journey. Cliff Blazinski worked at Epic Games for around 20 years. He was the lead designer on the first three installments of Gears of War and also worked on other games like Jack Rabbit and Unreal. In 2012, he left the company and in June 2014, he announced his own studio called Boss Key Productions. And their first game was Lawbreakers, which released in August 2017. And some of you will have definitely heard of it. I think that Lawbreakers was a decent arena game at its core. It was an arena shooter that had some nice mechanics in there and it was pretty fun to play. Sadly, I think it released five years too late. And what I mean by that is that arena shooters just aren't popular anymore. The gaming industry has moved on, more tactical experiences are taking its place. Battle Royale, that's the in thing right now, but arena shooters like Quake and Unreal just aren't as big as they once were. They still do have die-hard communities and fans, regular players, but it just doesn't have that mass market appeal that other games have now. And in April of this year, Bosky announced that because Lawbreakers failed to find an audience that they'd no longer be updating that game and would instead be focusing on a couple of other different projects. They did say though that they would continue to support it in its current state. And then out of nowhere comes Radical Heights. No hype, no teasers, just boom, the game was there on Steam. It was announced on April 9th and the day after it was released into Early Access. And when I say early access, I really mean it with this game. More on that shortly. From what I understand, the game has been in development since November of last year. And I think the studio knew early on that Lawbreakers might not have been able to pay the bills, so to speak. In that time, they've seen other games like PUBG and more specifically Fortnite flourish. And I think that they've made the choice here to jump onto the Battle Royale bandwagon while it's hot and make a free to play game in the form of Radical Heights. We all know how well Fortnite does with the free to play model. Skins, more skins and then some extra skins. And it does so well because people love what's being offered and updated on a regular basis. Radical Heights is going for something very similar with a completely wacky and out there theme that really lends itself to comical skins and creative freedom. I mentioned that the game was in early access, but you really need to understand that in this case, it's more like early, early access, like pre-alpha. If the game was started in November, then we're talking roughly six months of development, give or take, and that really shows. If you're gonna check this game out, it is free to play, but you'll have to accept the fact that you're playing a game that's extremely rough around the edges right now, and a large part of the map is still work in progress. Buildings are placeholder, textures are not fully implemented in some places, and overall, the animations and quality is not where it should be for a finished product. And you can't expect it to be when the game's been in development for such a short amount of time. That being said, when is early access too early? Is that even a thing? I don't know. You could be forgiven for thinking that Bosky wanted to throw together a BR game as fast as possible and get it out there hoping to get a piece of the BR pie. That being said, gameplay, despite feeling a bit rushed and rough around the edges, I have to give credit where credit's due. The game does come out with a few interesting mechanics and ideas, and it tries its best to separate itself from the crowd. First up, the whole game is based around an 80s game show theme. Game show announcers tell you exactly what's happening at any given moment, from prize crates to the final showdown. Again, something a bit different there. The player models are outrageously over-the-top, neon 80s inspired game show characters. And when you land on the ground at the start of the game, there are no parachutes. You simply just land on the ground and do a weird army roll, because why the hell not, I guess. Another aspect that's different here is that the game has a currency system which really separates it from other VR games. When you kill someone, you can pick up cash, and you can also find cash around the world from cash registers or lockers that you can smash, or you might also find money in crates and just generally lying around. You can then use this cash to buy weapons and armor from vending machines or even use a healing station. Where this gets really interesting though is that inside the game are cash machines, and if you use one, you can both bank money that you've earned so far or withdraw money that you've built up overall. If you bank money, that means that if you die, you're not going to lose it. But 
you can also then withdraw it in another game, maybe allowing you to buy a powerful weapon earlier on if you really want to make it easy to win. That being said, you can only withdraw $100 at a time, so you'll be pretty vulnerable standing at the cash point for a long period of time. There's a bit of a balance thing going on there. Cash is an important part of Radical Heights though, because although you can find weapons in the world, often some of the more powerful guns are within vending machines, so money really is important. Banked cash or your overall cash does serve another purpose though. Its secondary use is to buy cosmetic items. You find cosmetic items around the world and you can then use earned cash to buy them permanently. And of course, if you're a big lover of certain cosmetics, you can buy them with real money too. Because this is a free to play game after all, you knew that had to be in there somewhere. Companies gotta make money. The way that the game goes about the classic battle royale zone is also very different from other games. Normally when you're playing Fortnite or PUBG, the zone comes in in a uniform circle. On the map a circle will show you the safe zone and then the gas or electric storm comes in to form around it and then it will shrink in more stages of circles. In Radical Heights this works a bit differently. The map has a grid system and each square on the map can be either a safe zone or not but there will always be a route from one square to the next. What it does mean though is that there's going to be safe and not safe areas all across the map, which makes the experience a bit different than what we're commonly used to. At the end of each game, you then get a predetermined area of the map that becomes the showcase shootout, and every player has around three minutes to get there, and when inside, the zone will slowly move in until a winner is found. The inventory system and gunplay is very basic here. You can run around and pick up backpacks and utility belts that increase both your weapon slots and equipment slots rather than having a backpack system like in PUBG. The gunplay is extremely arcade and simplistic and there's nothing wrong with that if the game works and it's fun. It's got a similar system to PUBG 2 when you hold right click to zoom and click it once to ADS. The gunplay and movement in this game, it's okay, it's a good start. Now one of the things that Fortnite has going for it is that it doesn't take itself too seriously and that allows for a great deal of creative freedom and honestly it's what makes the game so much fun. Radical Heights has that too from the theme and crazy dances, BMX bikes that you can do crazy stunts and tricks with and zip lines that help you get around the map. They're going for something a little different but it's not going to be for everyone and honestly some of those things just aren't that interesting. The whole game show theme is meant to be in your face. It's meant to be a bit satirical, but that isn't going to be for everyone's taste. The creative director, Zach Lowry, used to work on Saints Row, and I think you can see some of that DNA in here too. As you may know, that game franchise is completely bonkers. And that brings us back to early access, or as this game has been described, extreme early access. This may be an early access title and a free to play one, so it's hard to complain too much I suppose. There's always an argument that well come on it's free to play so the fact that it's in such an early state shouldn't be that much of an issue and I accept that. If we had to pay for this game up front then maybe that would be a lot more worrying. That being said you can still buy a founders pack of Radical Heights for around £12. I completely understand that a free to play game has to make money somehow, I've got no problem with that. But Radical Heights is not even at an early access date yet in my opinion. That's how early on in development this game is at the moment. Sounds, textures, animations, models, even entire buildings are massively work in progress. There are lots of bugs, glitches and you'd expect that with an early access game but the entire game at the moment feels like a very prototype version of a game rather than an actual product that's anywhere near being finished. But you know what, that's kind of cool in a way. I'm an optimistic person and it's certainly a different approach and I understand that the money that some people pay for that founders pack could go into developing the game and making it into something a lot better. So I completely understand if people want to support the vision for this game and pay for that founders pack. That's their choice at the end of the day. That being said, I think the game is fun and it does have potential, but I feel like it's got a long way to go before it's in a acceptable state. First impressions are everything and I do worry that in their desire to quickly get another battle royale game out there, they may have shown this off a bit too early. Only time will tell. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Radical Heights.
If you're trying to enter the Battle Royale market right now, you're going to have a hard time. You've got to be better than the competition. And at the moment, PUBG and Fortnite are reigning supreme. And I think that they're catering to the two main audiences of multiplayer shooters. Those two have got it on lock at the moment and it's going to be real hard for anyone else to encroach on that territory. And that's all for today folks. If you've played the game, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, dislike it, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.